When it comes to discoveries that boggle one's mind, what location is better to explore than Antarctica? A vast, frosty unknown with more mysteries than I can count. Scientists are constantly discovering new things that I know make me exclaim WTF, so why not share them with all of you? I had a feeling you'd agree, so let's get started before I get distracted by something shiny. Well, how about I kick off today with the elephant in the room? A big hole that can grow at speeds you might not believe. Let's go back to 2017 when a giant hole appeared in the Antarctic ice in mid-September and initially measured a simple little 3,700 square miles. Which might sound pretty big already, but just wait for it. Within six weeks, it had grown to more than 30,000 square miles, an area almost as big as Kansas. That's just over eight times its original size in less than two months. Yikes! Known as a Polynia, the hole was an area of unfrozen ocean surrounded by ice. So this one, known as the Maud Rise, located in the Lazarev Sea, was first recorded in 1974 but had not reappeared since. It was spotted during the depths of the Antarctic winter, when sea ice is at its thickest. So you're, you're telling me this is technically a recurring thing? Great, that just makes it even scarier. What caused it to open back up was a mystery. It had previously been suggested that Polynias that appear in the winter were caused by winds blowing across the ice, but what exactly causes them to appear is not fully understood. Add this to the list of the world's greatest scientific enigmas, I suppose. In a study published in the Journal of Geophysical Research, Atmospheres, scientists led by Diana Francis from New York University have now found that cyclones might have been behind the phenomenon. The team used satellite observations and high resolution data relating to the time and space of the Polynia to work out the conditions that led to the hole. They discovered that intense cyclones and strong winds had caused the ice to be carried away from the region. The cyclones they found were comparable to Category 11 on the Beaufort scale. Yep, repeating that for emphasis, folks, a Category 11. Folks, the scariest end of this scale is Category 12. So this is about to haunt my nightmares. Surface winds drag the sea ice to the left, while the cyclonic winds carry them in the opposite direction. This led to an opening in the ice field near the center of the cyclone. So the Maud Rise area grew and grew until it eventually merged with the open ocean, as the ice began to retreat as a result of the onset of summer. So researchers say the link between cyclones and polynias has implication for the future, as climate change models suggest that there will be more polar cyclones in the future. More. Mid-sea polynias are important because of the exchange of heat between the ocean and the atmosphere resulting after their occurrence, especially during the winter months when the sea ice pack is expected to be consolidated. Having such windows affect the ocean circulation and the atmosphere as well, according to experts in a statement. So after the polynia has opened, it transfers vast amounts of energy between the ocean and the atmosphere, with the potential to globally alter climate because of how it affects ocean circulation. So this is what the experts are going to be working on next. Their focus will be looking at other mid-sea polynias and seeing if the same mechanism is causing their opening. And they would also like to look at the frequency of all mid-sea polynias around Antarctica and related to the cyclone activity during winters. Pardon me, how is this not bigger news? Mark this down under end of the world news we shouldn't be ignoring. So I know I've talked plenty about the theory that Walt Disney's head is cryogenically frozen and kept somewhere secret for future science advancements, but did you know that someone actually discovered an entire frozen landscape in Antarctica? Preserved for time? Scientists revealed in October of last year that they discovered a vast hidden landscape of hills and valleys carved by ancient rivers that has been frozen in time under the Antarctic ice for millions of years. This landscape, which for reference is bigger than Belgium, has remained untouched for potentially more than 34 million years, but human-driven global warming could threaten to expose it. Am I shocked by that statement about global warming? No. It is an undiscovered landscape that nobody's laid eyes on. This was a statement from Stuart Jameson, a glaciologist at the UK's Durham University and the lead author of the study. He mentioned that what is exciting is that it's been hiding there in plain sight, emphasizing that researchers hadn't used new data just a new approach. So the land underneath the East Antarctic ice sheet is less well known than the surface of Mars, which is so wild to think about when you consider how much we don't know about Mars to this day. So the main way to like quote unquote see beneath it is for a plane overhead to send radio waves into the ice and analyze the echoes, a technique called radio echo sounding. Experts are now on course to develop atmospheric conditions similar to those that prevailed between 14 to 34 million years ago, when it was three to seven degrees Celsius warmer than currently. But doing this across the continent and remember, that Antarctica is much bigger than Europe would kind of pose a huge challenge. So the researchers involved used existing satellite images of the surface to trace out the valleys and ridges more than two kilometers below. The undulating ice surface is a ghost image that drapes gently over these 
spikier features. So when combined with radio echo sounding data, an image emerged of a river carved landscape of plunging valleys and sharply peaked hills similar to some currently on the Earth's surface. It was like looking out the window of a super long flight and seeing a mountainous region below. The area, stretching across 32,000 square kilometers, was once home to trees, forests, and possibly animals. But then the ice came along and it was frozen in time. Exactly when sunshine last touched this hidden world was kind of difficult to determine, but the researchers are confident it has been at least 14 million years. Experts say that their hunch is that it was last exposed more than 34 million years ago, when Antarctica first froze over. Some of the researchers had previously found a city-sized lake under the Antarctic ice, and the team believes that there are other ancient landscapes down there yet to be discovered. The fact that retreating ice over past warming events, such as events that were like 3 to 4.5 million years ago, didn't expose the landscape was cause for hope, but it remains unclear what the tipping point would be for a runaway reaction of the melting. The study was released a day after scientists warned that the melting of the neighboring West Antarctic ice sheet is likely to substantially accelerate in the coming decades, even if the world meets its ambitions to live in global warming. Do y'all remember that last year a massive piece of Antarctic's brunt ice shelf? About a chunk, I think about the size of two New York cities broke free? So the Brent ice shelf lies across the Weddell Sea from the site of another ice shelf that's made some headlines, the Larsen Sea ice shelf on the Antarctic Peninsula. So last year the Larsen Sea ice shelf, which was roughly the size of New York City, and it was long considered to be stable, collapsed into the sea. Glacier experts have warned that some of the world's bigger glaciers could disappear within a generation without a dramatic reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. So once again, to sum this all up, global warming is real folks. Well, while we're on the topic of things melting and ending the world, the Doomsday Glacier is in danger. Antarctic's Doomsday Glacier is nicknamed as such because its collapse could drive catastrophic sea level rise, and uh, it's melting rapidly in unexpected ways. Technically called the Waits Glacier, it is roughly the size of Florida and is located in West Antarctica. Part of what holds it in place is an ice shelf that juts out onto the surface of the ocean. The shelf acts like a cork, holding the glacier back on the land and providing an important defense against sea level rise. But the crucial ice shelf is highly vulnerable as the ocean warms. In two studies published in early last year, scientists revealed that while the pace of melting underneath much of the ice shelf is slower than previously thought, deep cracks and staircase formations in the ice are melting much faster. Every year it sheds billions of tons of ice into the ocean, contributing about 4% of annual sea level rise. Particularly rapid melting happens at the point where the glacier meets the seafloor, which has retreated nearly 9 miles since the late 1990s, exposing a larger slice of ice to relatively warm ocean water. The the complete collapse of the Thwaites itself could lead to sea level rise of more than 2 feet, which would be enough to devastate coastal communities around the world. But this glacier is also acting like a natural dam to the surrounding ice in West Antarctica, and scientists have estimated global sea levels could ultimately rise around 10 feet if it collapsed. While it could take hundreds or thousands of years, the ice shelf could disintegrate much sooner, triggering a retreat of the glacier which is both unstable and potentially irreversible. To better understand the reshaping of the remote coastline, a team of US and British scientists from the International Glacier Collaboration traveled to the said glacier in late 2019. Using a hot water drill, they bored a hole nearly 2,000 feet deep into the ice, and over a five day period, sent down various instruments to take measurements from the glacier. The instruments included a torpedo like robot called Icevin, which allowed them access to areas previously almost impossible to survey. The remotely operated vehicle took images and recorded information about the temperatures and salinity of the water, as well as ocean currents. The scientists found even though the glacier is receding, the rate of melting beneath much of the flat part of the ice shelf was lower than expected. Yay! The melt rate averaged 2 to 5.4 meters a year, according to the study, which was less than previous models had projected. So yay! A little bit of good news. Melting is being suppressed by a layer of colder, fresher water at the base of the glacier, between the ice shelf and the ocean, according to the research. But like I said before, the glacier is still in trouble. Despite its small amounts of melting, there is still rapid glacier retreat, so it seems that it doesn't take a lot to push the glacier out of balance. So remember those staircase-like terraces and crevices? Yeah, so those big cracks are going all the way through the ice shelf. Melting was really, really rapid in these areas. Warm, salty water was able to funnel through and widen cracks and crevices, contributing to the instabilities. So the glacier isn't just melting up, it's melting out. Melting along the sloped ice of the cracks and terraces may become the primary trigger for the ice shelf collapse. The findings adding new layer to a slew of alarming studies point to the glacier's rapid melting. A 2021 study found the ice shelf could shatter within the next five years, which I 
And in 2022, a scientist said the glacier is hanging on by its fingernails as the planet warms, with the potential for rapid retreat in the coming years. Okay, add that to the list of end of the world predictions. All right, time for some alien theories. So back in 2017, scientists in Antarctica discovered a new bacterium that could survive solely off of chemicals in the air. These microscopic organisms can survive off of just hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide. Taking the term extremophile to the next level, these microbes can survive in some of the most extreme conditions that exist on our planet. These organisms are so unique that they are opening up the potential for finding alien life. Because now that we know organisms can exist off of only chemicals in the air, extraterrestrial life could exist in much wilder circumstances than previously thought. The conditions necessary for life to exist have evolved as we have grown and learned over time. One of the criteria in considering alien planets as hospitable to life is liquid water. But does the discovery of an organism that essentially survives off of only air change that? The research team reconstructed the genomes of 23 microbes and was able to identify two species of previously undiscovered bacteria, known as WPS-2 and AD3. Living in the soil with other species, these bacteria survive with little sunlight, no geothermal energy, and extremely limited nutrients. As mostly dormant bacteria, Bacteria. These are the first life forms where we can see that maybe life on other planets might not be anything like life on Earth. Which means we can now understand how life can exist in unusual and never before seen circumstances. Which could possibly push us forward to discover alien life and better understand where and how aliens are, well, most likely to exist. Exoplanets that once may not have even been candidates to hold life might be reanalyzed to find habitable regions and the potential to hold life. It is apparent that the better we understand life on Earth, the more equipped we are to search for alien life. Okay. How about we end today with something disturbing yet playful? I know just the topic, seals with superpowers. In 2014, the National Science Foundation announced that scientists discovered Weddell seals may have a sixth sense. They have biological adaptations that allow them to dive deep, as much as like hundreds of meters while hunting, but also an uncanny ability to find the breathing holes they need on the surface of the ice by using the Earth's magnetic field as a natural GPS. I know, I know, it sounds like something out of somebody's favorite science fiction show, but it's real, and it boggles my mind, so I had to share it with y'all today. And that brings us to the end of our time, and I don't think I'm in a rush to go exploring the pros and beyond anytime soon. Anybody else? Yeah, that's it. Folks, I've been Alexa, your resident ooky spooky girly, and if you enjoyed my ramblings today, could you help us out by giving this video a like, subscribing if you aren't already, hit the bell for more disturbing content from us here at Top 5 Scary Videos, and I'll see y'all next time, you lovely spooky people.